Okay. So how was yesterday's class? So any feedback? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it is okay. We don't okay. need it. All right. And I would like to see all your faces. So why your videos are turned off? Please turn on your videos. So how was your day? So I think uh, you people will be uh, thinking about me like always she asks the same kind of question. How was your day? How are you feeling? All the time, the same kind of questions. Don't mind. I mean, generally, I'm asking you people, how was your day today? It was good. It was good? Okay. So what about others? Come on, please tell me, how are you? How was your day? Is it so hectic, tired? Fine, fine, thank you. Okay, just give me a second. I'm so sorry. Okay. All right. So I guess everybody's uh, day was good today and uh, it's not so hectic because we are doing the webinar at seven o'clock. The entire day will be so busy with our works, with the household works, with the office works. I guess everybody will be busy. Right. Okay. So yesterday we have seen five things that how this NLP uh, will be useful to control our subconscious mind. Right. I guess everybody uh, had remember what are the five ways that we uh, how this NLP will work. Right. The first thing is we generally store our memories. Sometimes we do remember the memories and sometimes we don't remember the memories. And this NLP will help us to understand where the memories are located and how this can be rectified, not to stay in those memories when we have the challenges. Right. That was the first thing we have discussed, if you do remember. So we can, we can uh, use, we can uh, use NLP techniques to, utilize, to overcome those memories, not to stay in the past with some kind of sub-modality techniques. So out of those sub-modality techniques, the first technique is called as a parts integration. So the first technique is a part integration. So now let's let's uh, talk about the parts, right? We know, as we discussed, memories will be stored in our memory, right? The memories will be stored in two different ways or in two different locations. So we need to identify in which location all these memories have been stored. For example, uh, let's think, I went to a, look, have, uh, to a vacation, right? So in that vacation, I have a good memory. I have seen so many places. I felt so happy. And there were a lot of memories in those vacations. And that is then happy look. That is those memories are being stored in a happy, happy moments. And for example, I'm so irritated. And uh, today morning, and I'm frustrated. My boss has scolded me and I'm not at all happy for the whole day. And, and those memories are being stored in the other location, right? There are two different locations. So we know that these parts, uh, we know these memories are stored in two different locations. So depending upon our emotion, we choose these different kinds of memories. 
either we choose the happy memories or we choose the sad memories right those are called as parts so these memories are divided into two parts so one is the happy moment one other so when we have depending on the situation kind of emotion do we have at that moment any question so we need to understand and why this parts integration is being discussed because when we are in that dilemma when we are in the dilemma it is very difficult to take up the decision so we will think why i am in this way i want that but still i am i am suffering i want to overcome this pain but still i am suffering right i want to grow in my career but still i can't grow right and i want uh, i want to overcome my anger but still i am not able to so there is a confusion between your decisions so in order to take the decisions in a right way we need to understand in which location these memories are being this information has been stored and how it can be replaced by using this part integration so which part is play, having a more intentions and what are they giving and both these so let's think um let's give an let me give an example i want to reduce my anger but still i am not able to so here i have an intention to reduce my anger here i have an intention not to reduce my anger so both the ways i am thinking and i am unable to take the decision to reduce my anger anger still i am doing again and again and again and repeating the same i am unable to take the decisions so in order to overcome this in order to take a decision in a right manner do remember as i said nlp is a toolkit this nlp can be used in different different ways it is not one particular technique is used only for one particular purpose how it can be utilized now parts and integration can be used for in different ways to identify your memories to uh, frame your goals right to motivate yourself to take your the decisions in a right way so in the different forms we can use this parts integration right now i want to go with this part integration with a demo so who are ready so who will be the ready anyone is ready any one from from all of you any one come forward let's do a practical session yes you know great thank you so much ma'am only give me one minute only just one minute sure so uh, for everybody is it clear what is the parts and why do we use this parts integration okay come on uh, chat with me no need to uh, talk right just text me in the chat box are you able to take the decisions on the right time yes yes ma'am i'm ready now yeah you are ready all right thank you indu now indu just take up the situation uh, what do you need why you are not able to take the decision tell me in which area of life you are not able to take any decision um there are many areas not one particular area there are uh, there are a lot of areas that i am not able to take particular decision but uh, regarding okay. when you are choosing when you are said about the anger then definitely i will um choose anger only there are sometimes when i feel... no don't choose the anger because we are going in the next topic the anger management so don't choose the anger let's go with the another choice okay apart from this uh, regarding my like uh, 
decision one is a case which area i'm not able to take decision simple thing i'm telling you for example if i have to purchase any uh, if i have going for shopping if i have to buy something mm -hmm. then i'm always in the confused state whether to buy this one or whether to buy that one instead decisions i'm not able to take at that moment mm -hmm. because people are like they know people take instant decision okay i will go for this only with mm -hmm. conviction so that with conviction that decision doesn't come okay regarding my so that same, so that no that whatever the situation you have given me right now right that is a very simple uh, situation uh, where we can use this part integration right for that particular situation we i can give you the five steps first thing identify the part which part are you preferring i mean are you having a choice like do you want to purchase or do you or don't want to purchase which one is the most triggering point for you that is a triggering point because i so am not want able to, to purchase decide. you don't want to purchase that was the problem both, right both, both that's what i'm saying i am not asking you to take the decision both the thing but which one has the priority level i don't want to if i don't purchase i am not in the loss but if i purchase it should be like value for my uh, value for money value for choice value for looks everything it matters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. okay see here we when we are not able to take the decision right here there are two dilemmas so they are called paths so when you are in two dilemmas one will be the higher priority maybe you have liked those things but still you might be having some issues with the financial or maybe with the color or maybe with the uh, model right or maybe with some other things which mm -hmm. one is dominating at that moment mm -hmm. Should uh, go or shouldn't go? Financial and colors, both thing matters. You're not audible. You're there. Hmm. Uh, your network is weak. I think you're right. It's showing red. It's showing red. Yeah. Is it audible? Ha. Uh, now it is okay. Hmm. Okay. One second. Let me change my network. Now it is okay. Previously, it was showing red. Is it clear now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For everybody. Yeah. Okay. so see when when you are having those two differentiations right we have to choose which one is your priority what is that part is making you to stop to take that decision hmm. right that is the first step and the second step you need to understand which of the part is good for you so either to either to go or not to go which part of the decision is good for you but that time you know finance see i don't want to keep the finance as a blockage but sometimes it overpowers like see we have like human minds we always say we should not block our minds we should not always sometimes the desires need to be fulfilled desires need to be fulfilled because if we keep on uh, dominating our desires because of the money because of the other issue there are many dominating factors time is also issue energy is also issue so so that time now we we are like we are not happy with whatever we are doing suppose for example i'm telling you i'm already doing one one course like i'm doing like a graphology i'm doing course okay i'm also working uh, i'm also doing one uh, like a boot camp i'm doing i'm also doing nlp there are lot of things are doing but if I, if i if you say me uh, i should not do this one why i should do one at a time then it will take a long time because mm -hmm. that course will take two years to complete the one mm -hmm. which i am doing which i am very mm -hmm. interested and job i can't leave my job the other thing is that if i have to do this uh, boot camp that is also very important because i am learning lot of new things i want to apply them in my training process and all these things but at the same time in the during the boot camp also they said me you should go for nlp 
you require these NLP sessions. I joined this NLP <coughs> also. So you can see that a lot of things are important, but mm -hmm. crunch is also there. Like I have to see my budget also, how much I'm able to invest, how much time I will be able to donate. Because if I look for NLP sessions, there are number of NLP sessions. Right. I look for a boot camp, there are number of boot camp sessions. So one which I'm convinced, which is value for money, everything you have to look at a time. Then definitely instant decision becomes a little difficult and in fact, it becomes a little challenging. It becomes challenging for you. So I'll give you a very simple example regarding purchase of clothes because this is a very common problem with the women mm -hmm. when they go for purchasing. They see a lot of things. They see the quality, they see the price, they see whether the, if the thing is costing more than the money, more than beyond that, it's not worth that amount. Then definitely you will not go with that thing. A lot of factors we have to see in detailing and ultimately we waste a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need to compromise also. Right. See, here, de taking decisions about the clothes or about the career, whatever you have said right now, right? So we have all this stuff, but sometimes it becomes very difficult. That's the reason I asked uh, everybody who is there in the tough situation, please come out so that we can use this part integration on them, right? When you are in a tough situation, right now you are taking up so many things and it's going smooth right now, right? So in, there is no trouble in your personal life or it is not, there is no blockage or anything. So it's going on. For example, let's think uh, there is a blockage in your personal life and right now you are not able to manage anything. Right now you need to take up the decisions, either you need to quit the job or you need to take up the courses or you have to quit the courses. If you are in that situation, right in that situation, so now tell me, what will you do? Then you will think about your career, your courses, or your uh, demands, or your personal area. What will you do that at that time? And there was a time when I had to take this decision. I wanted to uh, leave my career because I wanted to break. I wanted to take break from my career. So I took right. break from my career. Because I know if I can, if I have skills, definitely opportunities are also there. So that is right. the thing. At that point of time, you would have two kind, two kind of mindsets, right? Two, two different things running in your mind. What happens if I, if I, if I leave this career? What happens if I don't leave this career, right? If I be, if I'm there with the career, and uh, how should I take the decisions? You'll be in a so confused state, and you would have gone through with a lot of anxiety and stress. And you would have taken a lot of time to do that, right? When you are in a peak situation, peak state of mind, as I said yesterday, state is nothing but your emotion. When you are at a high level peak of uh, peak state of mind, then this part of integration can be used in two different ways. One thing is the simple way. The first thing, which part is, is more dominating? So which part is more dominating? Should you go ahead or should you not? Don't you want to go ahead? So which part is, uh, uh, is dominating? Identify those parts. Which one do you want to work? And the second step, which of these parts are good for you? So what you have to write good, what are the good points? Like if you leave, if you quit the job, if you don't quit the job, what are the good parts? If you are taking up the both the decisions and, and looking at the both the aspects, right? And the third step is the most, most very important. You should caution. If you are choosing any one, if you, if you think I need to quit, then you have to ask the very important question. What, why? Identify your why question. You need to ask yourself, what is the purpose of staying in this part? So what is the purpose of staying in this part? If you want to quit, why you are staying here? What is that purpose of quitting the job? Right. And the fourth step is creating options or how else you can meet the same with both the parts. So if you quit and if you are not, if you are, uh, are not quitting, right, both are the parts. So when you are in the same set of mode, how you can create an options by combining together of not leaving and leaving the jobs. And the fifth step is creating an integrated vision 
which is good for you where you meet all the needs so here we have to meet all the needs because we are not going to compromise here uh, either to quitting the job or staying at home so we have to create an integrated vision how we can make good to ourselves so that we can meet all our needs so these are the easy ways of part integration but according to nlp there are different steps so i want someone to come forward with a real example real problem where i can discuss this anybody saba all right okay sundari you are ready yeah ma'am i am audible now okay tell me right now uh, which area do you want to work on actually i have a small doubt ma'am uh, if uh, if we taking a decision making is like a Thing, it is easy to analyze if it is in relationship how will how will it will be work and how it will be managed to us see here the question is not about decision taking or it's not about the relationship if no. you are what what do you expect no. what, what is that you are facing okay. right now? Nice. Exactly. sorry ma'am i can't hear you so noise is interpreted so tell me what is that area you are suffering right now this class to not go hoga na ma'am can somebody Hi. mute their mic please okay so what exactly you are looking for yeah uh in my personal life i met some few clients in my area most of them they said they are in toxic relationship but they are they want to get out of right but the meantime they want to that relationship also maintain they are not in stable mind to take decision see uh sundari let me explain you don't yeah. go with the client problem because we don't even know what how ex- what exactly they are going through and mm-hmm. we have not uh, uh, we have not got the entire history of them right so we yeah. can't discuss i was asking you if anybody who has their personal problem if nobody is there oh. let me go with the example oh okay okay ma'am okay fine sorry sorry ma'am <laughs> Hello ma'am. Hello Devanjali. Yes ma'am. Ma'am actually right now uh, I am mm-hmm. going through anxiety. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a little bit stress problem also. So what is appropriate for me? So you have stress on which area? Um some personal. See Devanjali. We are doing a practical here. Somebody has to open yes. up. if nobody is opening up right i need to go with the uh, with my own example then only i can explain you very clearly so here i need someone who can explain their problem right if they are who are there in a dilemma state yeah so if you have stress right i agree you have stress but uh, mm. if you don't have stress but i can't do anything right okay let me explain with the example right madam yes sir uh, okay so in the parts integration the first step is select the unwanted behavior which you like to change so for example uh, i want to be so kind i want to develop a gratitude and kindness right but still i am not able to do that i am not able to develop that gratitude and kindness 
whenever i get angry i just shout i i just burst out i don't uh, have a control over me and i forget to have that gratitude and kindness in me so i was in a confused state so th- this unwanted behavior was i want to develop a gratitude and kindness that is a step one so you have to decide what is the unwanted behavior would you like to change so everybody has some unwanted behavior in our in different areas of life it is not that one area of life in different areas of life right select that one unwanted area behavior which you like to change and the step two identify two op- opposing parts of their behavior so for example now i just want to go here um the first thing so i place both the behaviors on my shoulders i mean on the hands so the first part is here i'm placing on the right hand my positive behavior and i'm placing the negative behavior on the left hand so in the positive behavior i was seeing so this is the demo i want to do with you people so in the left hand in the right hand i am i want to develop attitude of kindness and gratitude so this is my right hand now i want to see how does this is looking like so when you are tre- dealing with your client or we dealing with you you have to see how does it look like so you will create some mental images in your mind as i said yesterday we always stay in the memories with the visual images we create some sounds and visual images so when you are having that unwanted behavior we create some image so when you are placing that unwanted uh, when you are placing that behavior on the right hand that positive behavior you want to develop that gratitude so i i, I the first question was how does it look like so when i close my eyes when i am seeing i want to develop the gratitude and kindness i see a, a rose flower with a color of pink so i am seeing when i close my eyes i am seeing the gratitude in the form of image a rose flower a pink rose flower so the first question is how does it look like so when immediately ask uh, when the immediately question was what is that allowing to allowing to see so it is allowing me to see that flower in a peaceful state of mind right now once after seeing that what is that purpose you are looking for so whenever i see that image i want to feel that gratitude and kindness so why do you think that you need gratitude and kindness to stay happy or peace so what makes you to stay happy and peace so through practice or whenever i feel a peak state of mind i want to see i want to feel that gratitude i want to feel that peace guys is it audible yes yeah. okay so i want to feel that peace so then we will question them what what do you what are you seeing this what are you allowing this hand to see so i am allowing this hand to see that beautiful image while developing this kindness so i feel that image i feel that rose that that uh, freshness and that smell so that is your right hand and when it is coming to the now let's shift to the left hand now the question repeats the same now the question repeats the same now if i close the left hand what is this looking what does it looks like so here i am not able to develop my gratitude and kindness so when i when i say this statement uh, when i close my eyes i feel like seeing something a dark in shade but i am not able to see any image right now i am able to see a blank screen that's what i am seeing right now so what does it says what do, what is it is allowing to see something black i'm my i'm not able to feel that goodness so what is that purpose you want to do that 
you want to overcome that behavior because i want to work i want to close this uh, i i don't want to see this black image and i want to feel that freshness so why do you feel why do you want that why do you allow that in likewise you question and question and question and finally why i want this to overcome this behavior because i want this kindness to be developed because i want that peace and happy when when you come both the statements and you have to turn your hands in this way and close your high eyes and come closer 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 when you are coming closer so you have two images in your mind right now i am seeing a rose and a black image when i am bringing both the hands close together so i am mixing both the images together and finally i am making a one image and right now i am able to see a black background with a white color rose this is what i am seeing right now so that means both the parts are able to make a one integration that i want to feel happy so whenever you have that state of mind this will allow you unconscious mind to integrate both the parts together or allowing both the parts create some kind of images so this will help you to and make you both the uh, decisions whatever the parts you have in your mind this will allow you to create a different image and replace it right this is the demo i want to do it for you and right now if you are ready please do it by yourself right now i can uh, just close your eyes think something on your right hand which you want to change your unwanted behavior and the behavior uh, wanted behavior and unwanted behavior place both the things in both the hands just uh, think about your right hand what do you want what is that looks like what is that image you are creating it and what is that communicating to you is it fresh goodness comfortable peace and what is that high intensity you are having at in that place and what is that it is allowing to see right now <laughs> now shift your focus on the other hand and try to identify the positive intentions of the other hand so what is that unwanted behavior you want to change what how does it looks like what is that image you are seeing and what is it allowing to communicate with you now slowly turn your hands towards each other 
and try to bring close identify the common interest of both the parts what is that common interest do you have for the both the parts and try to integrate those common interest and see what is that you are trying to form an image so move your hands closer while making a metamorphic image you keep moving closing closer to your hands when your hands are finally together there will be a third image which is selected by you absorb that image place it if you have seen the third image breathe in deeply and open your eyes so how was the response like what did you see and how did you feel so are you able to integrate it great so great punam so it worked for you right so give your responses so this will help you to create a new image so why we are creating a new image according to nlp all the situations are being we live in those memories we live in those memories so in order to overcome those memories we always visualize we replace those memories with the different kind of techniques through nlp and this part integration whenever we want to change this unwanted behavior or whenever we are in dilemma we just use this part integration to overcome that so we will decide so for example if you are unable to take up the decision i said you the five steps right those are the five steps which which part is dominating what is that high intensity do you have what is that uh, criteria why what is the purpose of that part so if you choose this no i don't want this behavior so why you are choosing this behavior what is the purpose of not, not using uh, uh, deleting this behavior why you don't want to do this behavior right all this has be, has to be identified and create an integrated process you have to create a vision so how we uh, how we need to take a next step in order to overcome the unwanted behavior right or in order to take up the decision sometimes it will be very difficult for all of us to take up a decision right so instantly sit down take your pen and paper write down all these five steps write down and then you will get the answer so that is a part integration is it clear any doubts <coughs> okay shall i move ahead okay so now this is the third second technique is anger management so this why i have chosen anger management because this is one of the most uh, important for everybody right we always have this anger and most of the people suffer with this and people think uh, the nlp techniques the technical terms whatever we are using to learn nlp whatever we use we learn in nlp can be used only for certain things but no as i said nlp is a toolkit we can use all the techniques in the different different ways in our day to day right in the same way i am going to discuss here today about the anger management so now tell me i guess everybody has uh, taken up this anger management everybody has gone through this anger so how many of you have attended the anger management classes
no one i guess everybody used to have anger they throw things right yes they throw things they get frustrated they get anger oh my god i thought not to get frustrated but still i am getting frustrated that's what we have discussed yesterday right that is so most of us we deal with anger so everybody believe that whenever we get angry what we believe by the way just type in the chat box no need to talk you can and uh, type your responses in the chat box so how do you control your anger by not talking okay feeling helpless saying leave it anger is a big problem right avoiding okay right taking a deep breath absolutely so most of the people do the same thing right either they take deep breaths they avoid the problem or they just leave it or they just stay in the calm place or they visualize or they do meditations right or they just divert yeah they just divert their mind with a different kind of activity but if you see here most of the people try to control the anger which is highly impossible to control the anger so all these things whatever we had you have typed in the chat box right now you are trying to control the anger which is very 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 difficult so can you control your emotion is it possible so we have no control when we are in anger we absolutely shout we just talk unlimitedly we just we don't even know what we are talking when you are when you are in anger state right so the anger is an emotion so when you are in anger usually anger follows with the guilt because why we why we have the guilt because when we are in anger we don't have control over us and we just shout at the people or we just shout at the loved ones and we all uh, will be in different state of mind our our state will be very high and this anger follows with the guilt so when the, when when anger is an emotion it is difficult to control and when it is uh, happening again and again and again what happens when it is repeating again and again and again it becomes a loop it becomes a program in your mind yes when this situation happens i need to get anger am i right yes one particular situation or when you don't like the things you get frustrated and when you have this guilt there is a immediately following an another emotion get raised anger is an already an emotion but with emotion there will be a guilt for everybody thinking that why i am behaving in such a way once all your anger has got down it has been calmed down with your lot of the techniques you try to control your anger once it is controlled you reach to a state of mind why i am behaving in such a way why i am shouting on the children why i am getting frustrated why can't i keep myself so calm even though i'm trying so hard to control my anger it's not at all possible then your guilt starts with the third emotion is which you feel like a helplessness you feel no i can't do it i can't control my anger and you you will be, it will become an identity for everybody i am a very angry person right don't you think i am an angry person it is not possible for me to control my anger and just we make it our identity so in order to control your anger management but how, tell me how many of you made it your anger uh, identity how many of you made your identity as you are an angry person i have not uh, hi this is gloria mm -hmm. uh, i have not made it as an identity but uh, many times it happens that when i am not smiling people feel that i am angry 
<laughs> so you you everybody labeled it that you are not yes. smiling so that's the reason you are angry right you will not come near also to me i mean my colleagues i'm talking about so in office also it happens that if i'm not smiling or if i'm i give them a look they will not talk to me they feel like kuch to gadbad hai let's not talk now <laughs> Right. That has become my habit. Right, because that is the loop you have. If there is any some kind of a, a, a situation, or if you are not able to control any emotion, that means you feel that everybody feel that uh, something is going wrong. Right now, we know what is uh, anger, and it anger doesn't start immediately. It starts very slowly with within a limit. so your body gives an indication according to nlp it says that your body is the first index or the first mirror to raise any emotion it will give you the signals to you that something is going wrong with you so initially when you when the anger raises with a small with irritation or discomfort in your body that means it is giving a signal for you that something is going wrong with you there is some emotion raising with you now let's understand what is an emotion tell me what is an emotion feeling okay feeling right Expression. so what kind of feeling expressions we give Mm -hmm. happy joyful right so when it comes to anger raising our voice raising bulging out our eyes okay <coughs> okay let me explain so an emotion is a feeling giving a message or telling you something that is not working well an emotion is a feeling that gives a message to you that something is not going well with you so it is giving a message for you that is not going well with you right if you want to get away that uh, emotion right you need to understand what is the rule is not helping you because we already everybody knew that there is we uh, frame certain set of rules if it is breaking again and again and again then you get angry right is it right or wrong so why do we get angry for example as saying children children get, uh, get uh, always irritated they move here and there here and there they just run while you are working we get frustrated right why do we get frustrated because things are not going according to what we feel or what we want absolutely because things are not going according to you because your rule is to stay children at one place and do their work am i right yeah. now the first step in order to overcome your anger introspective you are the rule so the first thing please write down the rule that is hurting you in a, any area of your life that gets more anger write down the rule which gets you more anger just you have to identify your rule which hurts you more or let me know your rules yes so once you have identified your rule once if you have written written down now question that rule is that a fair rule so we are using one of the way to manage your anger so do you think is that a fair rule but actually no 
So tell me how many of you say yes. Whatever the rule you have set up, is that a fair rule? Yes. So do you think that rule is a fair rule? No, right? So everybody know that that is not a fair rule, but still we expect somebody to follow that rule. So now tell me, is that possible for others to follow this rule? Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, yes, Devanshali. Yeah, ma'am. I have said, ma'am, that uh, I go, I get hurt it uh, mainly if I, with some irrelevant uh, speech, whatever I have not thought. Also, if my friend, uh, if in my friend, someone is saying me that yeah, you were doing that or uh, you have done this, even I don't have done. Also, then I got angry. Then what? How to manage that? See, that irrelevant speech is also a rule for you, right? Yeah. So that is the rule. So you are expecting from others that you they shouldn't have that irrelevant uh, speech in front of you. Yeah. Right. So that's yeah. what we are discussing right now. Do you think that is the fair rule that uh, you can stop anybody uh, sitting in front of you that they have to have a relevant speech in front of you? No, actually, no. No, because right? It's not possible. Has their, has their own right thought. to talk. They can right talk, talk, right? They can talk, yeah. <laughs> right. It is not possible. Let's think. Now, let's think in the second, third, fourth step. Is it possible to follow the same rule? For Can you follow the same rule for other people? Yeah, most of the time, ma'am, I don't speak that's irrelevant to anyone that anyone will get hurt or uh, because I thought first that if I will say this, then he or she might be hurted. So in your statement, I found most of the times. Yeah. So it's not every time. Uh, no, most of the not. times. So yeah. that's what happens with every human being, right? Not every time. Yeah. Most of the times it happens. Yeah. So yeah. now, in order to overcome, now if you, do you agree with me that the rules are creating a lot of disturbance in our life? It is creating yeah. anger, yeah. it's creating emotion, right? Because you yeah. are the yeah. one setting the rules. Yeah. You, you are the one setting the rules. This has to be in this way. I have to go in this way. This traffic has to be controlled. I have to go on time to the office, right? My boss shouldn't... Uh, torture me or uh, my everybody yeah. has to pamper me in the office all these are the rules you have set yeah. and now in order to overcome you have to make it little bit flexible i'm not saying to erase the rule but according to nlp there should be a flexibility in your setting up the rules so we have to make the rule a little bit flexible in order to overcome your anger Okay. Right. So that is the yeah. first step. And the second way of managing the anger is disassociation. So let me explain what is association and disassociation. Right. Association means, let's think, uh, uh, please, can somebody mute their mind? So association means being in the same state of mind. I mean, you are living in that particular situation. Saba, can you mute your mic, please? Right. So here, we need to understand what is association. Association means staying in the same situation. Feeling, or feeling all those situations. For example, let's see. Uh, you have celebrated your birthday in a super excited way. And you want to remember and go back to that situation. Now tell me, if you imagine that situation, one of the super excited moment in your life. Just close your eyes, go to that situation and just imagine one super excited moment in your life. Just try it.
So how are you feeling? What are you seeing right now? A father, right? Right. So everybody has that super excited movement in your life or some negative movement in your life. If you are feeling, if you are staying in that moment, that means if you are, if for example, you are having, uh, let me go into your super excited moment. So when I'm closing my eyes, if I'm staying in that super excited moment, I'm able to feel that excitement. My heart is beating so fast. I am able to see all the vibes. I am in that picture. I am in that picture. All the people are around me. I am enjoying. That is association. That means you are associating yourself within the picture. You are staying in that moment. And disassociation means when you are staying away from that situation. Yes, feeling proud of your father, right? So when you are imagining that situation, how do you feel? So are you feeling at that moment or you are seeing that image very far from your place? If you are imagining the situation very near, right? That means you are in that situation. That is association. If you see that image somewhere, it's happening very far from you, and you are seeing like a movie, that is disassociation. So that means you are seeing very far from the situation, right? That is association and disassociation. So this will help you to connect your memories or to reduce your state of mind. In an, or to reduce your state of mind, it will help you to make those memories uh, away from you. So if in association, that will be that can be used to keep you motivated. For example, um, you have one in one achievement in 10th class or somewhere you have won a medal now let's go back and imagine that situation you have won the medal so if you go back to the situation somebody is wearing those uh, somebody is giving those honor and i am in that situation i am seeing this entire crowd that proudness in me right so this will help me to make feel that situation and keep me motivated that is association so in this anger management, we can use disassociation, not association. Because when people are in challenge, when you're in a tough situation, when they're in anger, we have to. So we now, in order to avoid the situation, in order to calm down that disassociation, we uh, in through NLP, we this is a simple technique I'm telling you, but through NLP, there's a lot of procedure. The practical session will be there for disassociation, right? the image whatever you are seeing you have to push from you that this is not happening in front of you you are pushing that image reducing the color the size of the picture you are making it little bit blur and you are making yourself like how you are feeling right now so that is disassociation so in order to control your anger you are pushing that image you are pushing that situation Instead of avoiding, you are, make, you are living in that situation and making it calm down. Got it? Mm -hmm. So everybody has turned off their videos. Please turn on your videos. I'm not able to see your faces. Any doubts? Okay. Now, the third is mind your state through physiology. As I said, state is nothing but your emotion. So emotions is when you are having a very peak level of emotion, it can be changed through physiology. According to NLP, physiology plays a very a major role to change your emotions. So how is it possible? Right now, since one hour you are in the sessions, I know everybody are tired, so uh, boring, listening continuously to the classes, not able to understand, so confusing, right? Now, come on, get up. Get up from your places and stretch your hands and tell me how you're feeling right now. Please get up from your places and stretch your hands. Just do, come on, get up. Do stretch your hands 
and less. Now tell me, how are you feeling? So once you are stressed, your body, so how are you feeling? Relaxed. Relaxed, right? You are sitting continuously in one place. Yeah. So you are continuously listening to the classes. You are continuously focusing on this. So now your body requires some movements, right? Why? Because there is a connection between your body and mind. According to NLP, your physiology will help you to control your emotions. So that's the reason nobody understands when there is a sunrise that we, when you stretch your hands, you feel so relaxed with the breeze, whatever you are getting at that moment. And that is because your body is observing that all that energy and that and because of that movements in your body, sending a signals to your brain that yes, this is the happy movement. This is the anchoring. This is the anchoring. So through physiology also, we can do the anchor. So the next step, next technique we are going to discuss is anchor. Anchor is, is the one of the techniques. So now before going into that, the, your emotion can also be controlled through physiology. So anger managed be controlled in three ways. One, introspecting the rule. Second, the disassociation. And the third is through physiology. Right? So I can give you a simple technique. According to NLP, there is a lot more uh, research has been done. So whenever you are anger, I don't know how many of your eyebrows has been will be like this when you are getting angry. Try to normalize your eyebrows when you are angry without touching it. Without touching your eyebrows, you have to bring it in a normal state. So that is your physiology exercise according to the NLP. To reduce our anxiety, to reduce your stress, to reduce your any kind of state. And there's a one more technique. You can stretch your lips. So generally we will be in, in this state. And when you're anger, this will be so high and this will be like so tight, right? It will be so tight. Now try to stretch your lips. So this is one of the exercises, physiology. This will help you to change your state because immediately when you are bringing a movement on your facial expressions, your face gives the signals to your mind. Okay. Yes, something is going on. Now I have to move. Right? So that is the physiology. Physiology gives. And this is a wonderful technique. Please go ahead. Implement it right now, immediately in your life, immediately after the sessions, after this workshop. Whenever you get angry, just try to use these two things. Try to calm down your eyebrows. Don't use your hands. Try to bring it in a normal way and stretch your lips. Not now. Now everybody in a, in a laughing state, but no, when you are anger, definitely you won't get lost at that moment, right? So we have discussed association and disassociation and the anchoring. So anchoring by default, we everybody have in our life. We already do that, right? Um, whenever we are in stress, people, now I'm talking to you. Now tell me what are the anchors I'm using right now? Can anybody tell me what are the movements I'm doing right now? Annoyed. Annoyed, okay. No, I'm asking the movements. A lip movement. Lip movement. Sometimes I'm doing, I'm shaking the hands like this. I'm doing this. And sometimes I am th when I'm thinking, I'm doing like this. So these are the anchors in order to overcome, in, in order to overcome your stress. The people who, especially the people who are standing in front of the audience, they feel more nervous and stressed, right? We usually use the anchors. Sometimes when you are breathing so heavy, right? We say, oh, this is an anchor. We say tick, 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 tick. And we are nervous. This is an anchor. By default, without knowing, unknowingly, your subconscious mind gives you the anchors. Right from the child till this moment, everybody has anchors. Right? But through NLP, consciously we set up an anchor. Consciously, we set up an anchor in order to uh, to stay in a peak level, in a state of uh, mind, right? In order to keep your mind in a high state, in order to keep you motivated, in order to uh, uh, in order to encourage yourself, in order to boost your energy, right? All this can be done to by setting up the anchor. 
So through NLP, uh, there's a basic structure to set up an anger, right? So I'm not sure how to do the demo right now. I, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are ready to take the, the demo, right? So these anchors can be set up in any area of your hand or shoulders. If you are being as a therapist, right? Uh, let me do the demo on myself. <laughs> okay. So I guess nobody will be ready for sure. Uh, so this anger can be overcome uh, to be in, in a state of, in any state, right? To be in a normal state. So there is a one state where I don't forget in my lifetime is my, whenever I think about my dad, I just remember only the moment when I lost my father. So when I close my eyes, I can see his hand. The last thing I have seen my father is his hand. So whenever I think about him, I can just remember the image, image of my father, the hand. So whenever I see that image, my heart is so heavy. It's um, so nervous. And I remember all the things. I, I remember all the rituals. I see things, which is very difficult. And I'm able to feel that emotion right now here. I'm feeling that heaviness here. I have removed. And now once again, I'm thinking the same situation. I'm just going back to see the same image. I am feeling it, the pain again here. So I'm touching it. And I'm just running. I'm coming down. I have opened. So this is the anchor I have set to myself. So now if I go back to the situation again, if I see my father, right? If I see the same image, if I'm going and touching here, it's a signal to my mind that yes, it's, it has, it's a time to stop. That is the anger. So here, the steps are select a feeling that you would like to see in a particular situation, which is troubling you. So for me, that is the most uh, unforgettable moment in my lifetime. Whenever I go and think, I, I just start because I was there in a the depression for almost one year when this incident was happened. A uh, lot of trauma was there for me. Uh, I have gone through that. So whenever I think, I just blank. It becomes blank for me. So anybody's situation, if any state of, it's not that trauma for anybody. You, you people can try now. Just do a practical demo. Yes, sir. Select a feeling. Selective feeling that you would like to have in a particular situation. Take a few moments, close your eyes, just take a few moments and remember exactly what is that feeling, strong feeling you have at this moment. Try everybody. Remember all the situations. See those images. When you see that images, where is that emotion you are feeling?
when it is reaching to that high intensity when you are feeling so much of pain that at that place place your finger at that place press a little bit and release now calm down and once again go back to the situation see the image again feel that intensity see the place where you are feeling and place your finger over there now release open your eyes now tell me what happening what did you see what is that intensity you had <coughs> anybody can share one of your experience ma'am it was my father's last night mm -hmm. when i lost him mm -hmm. so it was a very 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 bad experience for me and i went through that Mm -hmm. so where did you um, feel that pain need chest okay so when you place your finger so yeah. did you ready how was that feeling it was a little relaxing well placing my fingers mm -hmm. right so it was relaxing and this mm. anchor can be set up by practicing more and more so i can give a very simple example so when we are in trouble when somebody came come and place your place their hand on our shoulders we can imagine right we feel relaxed when we are in a yeah, high yeah. emotion right this is an anchor yeah. because mind already knows that there is a program in your mind when somebody comes and put our hands around our shoulders when you are in sorrow that says that our pain has to be reduced so your mind says that yes there is someone placing your hand there over you there is someone to hear me so yeah. uh, there is someone here to me so uh, my pain is getting reduced and we expect someone to place uh, their hand on our shoulders from our loved ones mm. right anchor setting yeah. up anchor is also is the same thing so whenever whenever we have uh, want to be in a reduce your state when you want to be in a peak level uh, when you may want to maintain a state of mind we have to set up some anchors and those anchors can't be set up in one one day practice or one time practice it has to be practiced so that your mind receives a signal yes this anchor is for this particular situation so whenever i get this uh, whenever i get this emotion your hand will automatically will go here without your intention so that is anchoring right so your mind sets the program so you are all there is a program in your mind that i have this pain but now you are reprogramming your mind by setting an anchor yes with this uh, anchor i am reducing my pain right mm -hmm. and trust me this will yes, be yes. helpful and when you are when you are in uh, stressed out or when you are nervous when you are in anger you can set up and you can set one more right you can set one more anchor so when you are nervous like you can hold something or you can press somewhere else right you can press here your knuckles so when you are treating the client it is very important to take the permission of the client when you are setting up the anchors you can't touch the client anywhere on their body so it is for you to 
place your hand anywhere on your body when you are doing with the clients you can't place in your hand any anywhere of their body so you can place either on their shoulders or you can touch their knuckles with their permission so you can set an anchor on the knuckles or on the hand on this way or on the shoulders and we have to seek the permission with the client all right yes ma'am so that is the anchor so these are the techniques that we have discussed yesterday five ways to overcome uh, your sub, uh, to manage your subconscious mind so association and disassociation can i ask a question ma'am yes who is this Uh, yes. Can I ask Go a ahead. question, please? Yes, so no. Yes, Gupta. Yeah, now you you explained about anchoring, ma'am. Yeah, <coughs> Doctor Sona. So mm -hmm. you uh, uh, explained about anchoring, ma'am. So you said that whenever uh, you you know thought of your father, you tapped your you put a finger on your chest. That is what you said, na ma'am. So that yes. was an anchor. So, but then uh, just tell me, ma'am, that uh, next time when you put your finger on your chest. I can't see you, ma'am. <laughs> I can. My video can is on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I can see you. So whenever you put your uh, finger on your chest, you'll again think of your father. Is this 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 what you are trying to tell me? <clears throat> no, 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 no. We will not think again about the father. See, when this situation arises, for example, now I am talking about my father. So immediately, yeah. what is that image I got? So right now I am talking to you, but still, yeah. Seriously, I am able to see my father's hands. Still, it is there in my eyes, in my okay. mind eye. I am yeah. I am able to see his fingers, which is very fluffy in a blue in color. So whenever yeah. I see see that image, I I feel that I am missing him so much that uh, yeah. compa that kindness and everything. I feel like to hold his hand, and immediately that uh, emotion starts for me that I am missing him so much. Yeah, right. So whenever yeah. I feel that right now again it started, it is paining here for me. So it doesn't mean that if I touch here, I will remember. No, if I am into that situation, if I am touching here with my finger, this emo now it reduced again. So because I am setting an anger here, I am. It is to control. Okay. So it is tapping. It is tapping me to setting an anger. Yes, touching here means that I have to. it is reducing my pain okay it is to reduce your pain right right it is reduce right. the pain to reduce your emotion or it is to reduce your state whenever that so, memory comes to you yes whenever that memory comes to me it starts here for me so i am setting an anchor here so if i tap here for a number of times it get reduced for me right right we don't remember if you once if you are coming out of the state and if once if it is occasionally or uh, yeah that's what i uh, thought that if yeah. you touch here you don't remember uh -huh. the situation yeah yeah, yeah. only that's when you are in that yeah. state <laughs> right right okay but then how how will it happen that if you touch here it will reduce it can increase also the pain why will it reduce <laughs> because we are programming our mind saying that whenever you are in this situation if you touch here it is sending a signal to your mind that yes she is touching here if there is an anchor to reduce the pain okay for example uh, you whenever you have a headache you are having a cup of tea or coffee yep. yeah help you to reduce your headache so this right. is an anchor for you mm -hmm. right so you are right. feeling an anger yes i feel freshness when i drink the cup of tea so whenever yes. you feel headache your brain sends you the signal i want tea now and that's right. the reason you that's the reason you are having tea and if it is repeatedly going again and again and again it becomes a habit a habit got it right. so you tell yourself first that by doing this my pain will reduce yes consciously yeah. you are programming your mind that yes if i touch here my pain is getting reduced and this right. is again and again if you are doing it your mind gets programmed that yes whenever you get this pain your your finger goes automatically got it thank you that becomes a habit habit right. so that is as anchor it is not that only you touch here you can create for example yeah, if you yeah. are in a state of mind you can use the music for some people who mm -hmm. listens to the music if they listen to certain kind of songs they feel more fresh 
that is the anchor yeah unintentional unknowingly okay. we are doing all these things so when you are feeling hmm. so upset or sad we just go for shopping we like shopping right? ma'am actually we find the way to escape from our bad emotions which right. uh, which are give which are hurt, which are hurting us which are giving pain to us we unknowingly we just find the ways to uh, avoid those emotions that's what i'm saying yes most of the times we see to avoid but i say not to avoid you just try to understand why this what is that emotion is giving a message for you what it is telling you so to understand that emotion you need to understand what is the rule you have set up see it's yeah. a simple yes. logic so everybody got hurt because your ego got hurt why that ego because there is a some id there is some desire which is which has to be fulfilled it is not getting fulfilled and that's the reason you get angry and that's the reason you will be upset that's the reason the emotion get arise so we need to understand what is that message why you are so upset what is that emotion is telling you so what is that rule what is that uh, 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 emotion is giving a message for you what is your body is sending you signals so you just think over all these lines and try to rectify it or try to manage your anger instead of controlling or avoiding any mm. emotion right yeah <coughs> even for good memories also you can use an anchor yes not only just for so pain or anger we, most of the times we do that so anger is not one type there are different kind of anchors this is the yeah. simple way of anger whatever we have discussed today in the webinar but in if you yeah. go back to into the course there are different kind of anchors as well yes right so right. for the good occasions for for example we went to some vacations or in the morning so once we see the freshness of the early morning right greenery fresh air breeze we just to see like oh, that's your anchor so once you so whenever you see whenever you do this you will see the greenery no no whenever you feel this you feel freshness okay freshness so that is you want to do that thing again you want visualize the scenery you'll see you'll you feel it you will visualize that's what i'm saying when you are in that situation visualize that situation and then set your anchor sitting like this so whenever you want to feel fresh just yeah. use your anchor that will create freshness gives you freshness yeah. so this is the homework this is the homework for you people for tomorrow's class tell me what is the anchor you have set up for good and for the bad situation so and let's discuss tomorrow's class okay thank you okay all right hello uh, hello ma'am am i audible yes veda uh yeah ma'am uh, good evening actually i have a question in this anchoring method so you mm-hmm. told me it takes a few days to program in our mind right uh, so is there exactly like these many days it takes or it depends on the person and their experience i mean uh, I, i know like uh, habit it takes 21 days so but uh, is there anything like that so everybody has a myth that habit takes 21 days but according to the neuroscience it takes 366 days to create a habit so why this 21 days challenge came into existence because in this 21 days there will be a mind and body coordination so to create any habit both mind and body has to be coordinated together right so your mind says yeah come on do this right now but your body says hey no i can't go that you want to reduce your weight so your mind says yes yes come on let's do this and your body says no i can't go immediately and go for the gym and do lot of workout it get tired so it says no i can't get up right now and your mind says come on get up get up and your body says no i can't get up this is what happens so in the first week this coordination has to be happen so they the, to maintain that consistency the first week says your mind says come on and your body it will push your body to do that in the second week there will be a little bit of coordination and you will see a little bit result that your body is supporting your mind and automatically when there is a coordination in the third week there will be some result both when mind and body is getting coordinated the result starts 
and you feel get you get motivated yes there is a change in me there is a visible change you are feeling comfortable right because when your brain and body feels more comfortable then automatically you get motivated to do it and that's the reason this 21 days consistently people ask you to create a habit so once you create a habit after 21 days automatically you will continue it yeah okay ma'am so the same thing happens in the anchoring method too right so there isn't any like a specific set of days or weeks it takes it depends upon how long you practice how inten- how uh, dedicatedly you practice on this anchoring it works on that okay ma'am thank you right okay okay guys thank you so much see you That's in tomorrow's right. class yes yeah. sanjeev Okay. I can't understand Thank about you, disassociation in anger Thank management. You. I have a doubt. Like, it is, yes, is it a healthy technique? I didn't get you. Can you repeat again? Ah, uh, disassociation in anger management. Uh mm-hmm. huh. Is it a healthy way to do? Okay. Yes, it's a healthy way, right? That's what we are discussing. So, what are the techniques what we have discussed here? It's sorry to disturb you, ma'am. Can we wrap up the session because we have another session? all right so we will discuss in tomorrow's class keep uh, jot it down all your doubts so we can discuss in tomorrow's class all right okay thank you thank you so much have a great day bye bye good night okay ma'am okay ma'am thank, thank you ma'am thank you bye bye good night ma'am good night take care yeah okay, ma'am bye khub bhalo kore ki kore